I struggle a lot at my sales engineering job and often ask myself why this job is not more fun. A job, any job at that should be fun, right? But sometimes it feels like someone is literally dragging me down. This is my personal story about recognizing when a job is beyond saving and knowing it's time to say goodbye. Hey guys, my name is Sasha and I work as a sales engineer at Snowflake. If you don't know what a sales engineer does, make sure to watch this video here. Today I'll be talking about work-life balance in sales, the importance of company culture, being treated as a resource as opposed to key team member, why I like the asset job and things I do to make my asset job enjoyable. I don't like the phrase work-life balance. In my mind, it implies that work is not part of life, that life starts after work and ends before work. While we're working, we're not living. That's BS. Work is very important in life. 72% of all people globally think that. But when I start to think about work in these terms, it's a sign for me I need to either do something about it or move on. I don't want to work outside of business hours like the 26% of all salaried employees do. I also don't want to work on weekends. But I also don't want to perform the bare minimum at work due to the imbalance. So what can we do? Well, I'll tell you what I do. But let's first tackle the reasons why we feel shitty at work. We call this with a collective name, the company culture. Do you feel left out to your own devices at work? That's almost the nature of the sales engineering work. You don't feel your manager's support in dealing with all the crap that gets thrown at you by the sales reps? I've been there many times. Do you feel that you're getting unrealistic deadlines to deliver your demos, presentations, POCs, which leads to excessive overtime and blame games? Welcome to the shitty company culture. While the word company makes it sound like it's a global thing, it usually is not. The company culture from a perspective of a sales engineer is defined through interactions between a sales engineer, sales, sales and sales engineering managers, and other people you work with daily. Since it's very subjective, it can be very different even to a fellow sales engineer in another team. Even worse, the company may boast a overall fantastic culture based on the anonymous employee satisfaction service, for instance. But you may still feel miserable. And that's actually good news. It means we can do something about it. But first, you have to love the sales engineering job. And here's why I love my as a job. Number one, I enjoy talking to customers and making them excited about the product I sell. I enjoy learning how my customers use my product and all the ideas they have about how they'll use it in future. I used to work as a software engineer and software architect and I always wanted to know how the software I was creating is used in real life. That is exactly what I'm getting from sales engineering and I've been enjoying interacting with customers for almost 10 years now. Number two, working for months or years on the same project was another thing that was really bothering me when I was working in software development. You become an expert in an area, find your comfort zone and you stop pushing yourself. That's almost impossible in sales engineering as we're constantly meeting and working with new customers. The pace is higher and I find myself constantly being challenged to work outside of my comfort zone. If you like growing professionally, you'll thrive in sales engineering. Number three, I like traveling for work. It's simple as that. In sales, we're expected to go on site a lot. You get to stay in good hotels, eat good food, expenses paid, what can be better than that if you like traveling? And number four, direct contribution and gratification. I talk to the customers directly, I get them interested in my product, or I get instant feedback why they're not interested in my product. Finally, closing deals means direct revenue for my company. Suddenly, the company's revenue is not some abstract number anymore, but I'm directly responsible for a portion of it. Very gratifying if you're looking for this kind of gratification. So what do I specifically do in order to enjoy my job? It's easy to moan about being overworked. 
But sometimes we need to look ourselves in the mirror to realize that big part of that is us being perfectionists. That's right, personal perfectionism is the top barrier to a healthier work-life balance. This is a general stance for all employees and I'm really affected by this. I just can't let it go. Everything I do needs to be just perfect. How well am I going to go in front of the customer if I don't uphold my own standards of quality, right? Well, here's the news. Perfect is the enemy of good. In this job, perfect is your enemy. You just don't have time for perfect. So drop it. Just drop it. It doesn't bring any value to anyone. The only person you'll make happy with this is yourself. But the cost is too high. So just drop it, stop being miserable and start being productive. Are you building a demo and you have enough to show the value to the customer? Stop it right there, you're done. Building a presentation, but you feel like you're missing cool icons, graphics or photos. Nobody cares, you're done. The next one I tackle is building a healthy relationship with a sales rep. And you and I had just met. I know. Yeah. And I do this by spending enough time with them working, agreeing, fighting, swearing, until we both feel we're starting to understand each other. Before you go and complain to your manager and their manager, NO! GOD! PLEASE! NO! First exhaust all possibilities of making it work between you by addressing and working out whatever bothers you about them no! and them about you. No! Another immediate remedy to an unhealthy work-life balance is to refuse stupid work. Work that wastes yours and other people's time and doesn't bring us closer to a deal. But I always try to propose a constructive alternative. For instance, a sales rep recently asked me to do a very detailed pricing slash sizing of the solution that we are proposing to a customer. And I know this would take me at least one week to produce. Of course, I don't outright say I don't want to do it. Instead, I go back to the sales rep and start asking them for a very detailed input that I'd need for that. At that point, it becomes clear that we don't have that info and that we'd have to do a lot of assumptions. So if we are going to do a lot of assumptions anyway, we might as well go the other route. For instance, showing the prices for comparable solutions we did with the other customers. So I suggest that we talk to the customer once again to align the expectation. The sales rep agrees, we talk to the customer, they're thankful we had another chat. And it turns out they would be fine with getting comparable pricing at that moment, as this is all they need in the current phase of evaluation of our software. And that's it, a week of work for something no one needs has been saved. No feelings hurt and customer is happy that they'll get the pricing sooner. And finally, I try to be friendly to my coworkers and never miss a chance to help people. With this, I get to know a lot of people in the company and they get to know me. And this earns me the respectful treatment by others. They don't see me as a resource anymore, but as a human being, I start feeling like a member of a team and not just some number on an Excel sheet. And this is how you build the company culture. It starts and ends with us. We are the company culture. Thanks for watching this video guys, if you liked it, please click on that like button and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Stay healthy and stay tuned.